What, I got 22 days until the Nationals? Should be plenty of time. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It is episode four of Road to the Nationals. And we're almost there. Class one, done. Class three, waiting on Josh. Class two, lots of stuff happened since the last episode. And I'm really excited about how far I got and how many things I accomplished in a very short amount of time. For me, anyway. I'm not the world's fastest builder, uh, but it is really great to see some actual progress. So without further ado, let's get right into some of the things that have happened for class two. This is the most progress that I think there's been in an episode so far. So uh, lots of things to cover. Let's just get right to it. All the body work, all the sanding has been completed. Uh, there's already been uh, two rounds of priming. I did some sanding in between uh, and uh, laid down, at least started to lay down the first base coat of color on the truck and yes it's flat black and doesn't look very interesting right now if josh was painting this body this would be done <laughs> um but it's not uh, this is just the first coat of many and uh it doesn't really give anything away into uh what i'm actually hoping i'm going to be able to achieve with this paint job uh, but it is the starting point and uh, I continue to encourage you to guess what I'll be doing. Now that it's all smooth in the right places, you can really kind of get a sense of what this was supposed to look like and an abomination is a good word for it. Uh, Josh likes to call it the jelly bean and I think that's actually going to stick because it does have a lot of curves uh, and not in any of the right places. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the best looking body ever since it's been modified but i actually think it's pretty unique and I, I like it i'm happy with the final result everything's nice and smooth there are a few areas that uh, aren't perfect but for the sake of timing and getting it done uh and to be honest because it's sort of a modified truck i think I, some of those things can be uh forgiven as part of the creative license of building something that looks like this. One of the biggest challenges I always have with a tiny truck, uh, especially a truck like this that is a lot of custom work, is how do I mount this body to the chassis in a, a way that's uh, least invasive, doesn't look like uh, it's been mounted in any sort of uh, toy-like way. I don't like using body posts, I don't like putting holes in the body if I don't have to. Uh, and this uh, was definitely a big challenge. I wanted to make sure it was hinged at the rear so it's very easy for me to access the inside of the truck in case something goes wrong. Um, and you, you never know when that's gonna happen, so you wanna make sure you have uh, a nice quick access to the truck. So what I wanted to do uh, is integrate the bumper and the hinge and the body mount in the rear all in one piece. And uh, I am not by any means a brazing expert. Uh, I'd like to say that I'm a top rated amateur, but I wouldn't even say that. I'm not the best one to take instruction from on brazing. Josh is a much better person to take tutorials from on this. Um, and I'm not being self-deprecating. That's the honest truth. It's just, uh, you know, I've got a, a couple of uh, metal risers that I use on the workbench. I put a, a, a big bathroom tile on top of that. And then I've got a grate from a, uh, a burner uh, on the stove that I don't use. <laughs> and that's sort of my brazing station. I use a uh, safety silv uh, solder, just like uh, you would normally use. I've got the Harris Stay Silv brazing flux. Uh, I've got a torch around here somewhere. I use burns matic map gas, nothing fancy there, uh, and a regular everyday torch attachment. Um, but these things work, you know, uh, just be careful. Um, you know, if you've got zero experience and you don't want a huge investment, uh, this is probably the best way to go to get started. Uh, of course, make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area, have a fire extinguisher handy, uh, you know, take care, be careful. You do want to make sure you're doing it as safely as possible. So in order to braise up this bumper, uh, I had some great mounts from a uh, scale built uh, who is a member of the Scale Builders Guild and also uh, very prevalent on uh, Instagram. He offers a whole set of uh, tabs. And these are like welding or brazing tabs specifically for our hobby. Uh, I've got some of them right here. They come pre-laser cut just like this. Uh, and then you can uh, 
chop one of these off and use it as a mount for uh, your truck. Sort of like I did with this rear bumper here. It's just some uh, steel 3 16 brake line uh, that I've uh, welded up to some um, mounting tab and then uh, just kind of uh, mounted it to the chassis and then uh, drilled some holes in the back of the body for uh, the bumper mounts. And now I've got a really nice hinge on the rear of the, of the truck. It's actually a full length bumper. It doesn't need to be this long, but I actually wanted to protect the body. And because it's so tight to the body and to the frame, uh, it doesn't really hurt a departure angle whatsoever. It's really, really great. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. It's also nice when it works out the first time, which doesn't happen often with brazing because uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> That's the rear bumper. Front bumper is a lot of the same. Uh, I used uh, my mini two bender to bend up a few pieces here. Uh, it's a, it's wider than it uh, needs to be. Again, it only needs to be as wide as the uh, chassis rails. Uh, but wanted to give it a little bit more uh, of a protective nature on the front just to uh, protect this body once again. Uh, stinger on there as well for extra points. So uh, full metal rear and front bumpers gives you a ton of scale points. Uh, as well, there's a nice little area underneath there for uh, the winch line to come out. Uh, the winch fair lead is mounted to the actual chassis cross member. Kind of all in one place there, it looks really nice. I like how it's actually hidden behind the bumper. I thought that was kind of a cool touch. Once I had the back mounted up and on that hinged bumper, uh, the next challenge to figure out was how to get it to mount in the front. Uh, because I didn't want to have body posts or uh, pins sticking out, uh, I went for this sort of stealth mount uh, that is just a, a bent up piece of 22 gauge steel that I've shoe gooed very aggressively to the inside of the hood. Uh, and it sits right between the two inner fenders uh, on the front of the truck. And uh, I drilled a hole into that metal and into the fender and used two body pins, which are very stealthily hidden behind the actual uh, headlights to keep everything in place. It's a really strong, really rigid mount and uh, should take a fair bit of abuse. Shugu can take a lot of hits before it actually comes undone. Um, well, actually what I'm hoping for is that I don't roll the truck at all. And then I won't have to worry about the Shugu holding up. One final element to that front body mount. I did print up a little radiator here, uh, just a very simple piece, uh, just to kind of give the appearance of a radiator. Uh, behind that thing so you don't see a bare metal piece uh, behind the grill. Just, you know, it's not worth anything. There's no reason to do it other than to make this truck look more realistic, which is part of the game. And I mean, not really for class two. Most of them are just comp rigs, but I did want to go the extra mile. I think it's worth it. In addition to the front and rear bumpers, I've also added some sliders. These are metal sliders as well, and I'm sorta cheating here. Uh, not sorta, totally cheating here. Uh, it's rigidly mounted, as it says in the rules, and it is the first thing that an obstacle would encounter. So I don't see why I don't get full points for that. I did want to keep these plastic sliders on here because, uh, you know, they're there. And uh, it was easy to mount these to that rather than braze up a whole separate thing, and then I'd have to add new uh, bottom plates. This just seemed easier and smarter and a bit cheaty, and I like that. I am running a PowerShift RC servo winch. Unlike Josh, I already had a bunch and uh, just uh, took one out of another truck and put it into this truck. So uh, I don't have to wait for anybody because I um, had some on hand. And I mean, Josh, I've got extras. I can send you one if you need it. Um, I'll get it in the mail right away. So in addition to all that body work and metal work, I also did some 3D printing and printed up a set of inner fenders for the front of the truck. Uh, these are very similar in design to what Josh was doing. His are metal, mine are uh, plastic, they're PLA for now. Depending on how this comp goes, uh, I might end up going to PETG, which is a much stronger, much more rigid uh, uh, plastic that can still be uh, printed. These will get primed and painted. Uh, I think I'll go sort of like a, a probably an aluminum color and paint just to kind of uh, make them look like metal without having all the extra work of making them metal. I mean, what Josh did does look very good and I'm not taking away from that at all. I just don't have time. So this was a much easier route. Uh, I will be installing lights. I like to get a few extra points for working headlight and tail lights. So uh, from my Trick RC comes the attack uh, advanced lighting system. Uh, these are really great lighting kits. Um, they are very modular. The way that Dan uh, packages these, uh, you can get 
uh, pretty much anything you want. Uh, this one has a bunch of three mils, uh, not very many five mils because this body actually only uses three mils, uh, three millimeter uh, LED light buckets. So um, got a lot of wiring to do in that regard. I'm gonna try to keep all that nice and low uh, and hidden because it's nice to hide all your lights. They are really great lighting kits. I've used them before. Uh, the t there's just a ton of options. I will put a link down below where you can check out all of the kits and all of the options available. Electronics, still waiting on some things. I thought I was gonna stick with the Castle uh, Mamba and uh, uh, Slate motor that I have uh, from the previous uh, uh, iteration of this truck, which was a 1900 kV slate motor. Uh, I'm gonna bump that up a little bit to 2200. I'm gonna switch over to Holmes as well. I'm gonna try the Puller Pro V2. Uh, I think it's probably going to be a nicer combo, more suited to the comp end of things and definitely going to give me a lot of power on 4S. And with that in mind, I've also swapped the servo on this truck to the Holmes SHV500 high voltage servo. I've had a lot of success with those servos in the past. I love how easy they are to wire uh, because they are direct to the battery you're running. Uh, these are capable of 4S power, um, but I don't think he recommends it. I think you can go 3S no problem. Um, 4S on this version of the servo might be pushing my luck, but uh, hey, I'm willing to take some risks. And finally, uh, I think I will have an interior in place very soon. Uh, I have all of the 3D printed parts to build the interior. I don't really think I'll have time to do a full flat floor interior uh, for this competition. Certainly by August when I comp again with this truck, uh, I'll have a proper uh, 3D interior. But for now, I'm going to use the Vanquish VS410 uh, body kit interior and uh, should sit in this body pretty well. Uh, width is spot on, so uh, in that regard, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I just have to uh, find one. <laughs> oh, shoot, I almost forgot. In, in addition to all of this exterior sort of uh, uh, cosmetic stuff that's happened, there's also uh, a bigger change on the inside. I took out the uh, standard 12% uh, overdrive that comes with the VS410 Pro and put in the Vanquish kit for 20% overdrive. Uh, this is a much more aggressive overdrive and should help tremendously in uh, pulling myself up over obstacles and also on descents too. I will lose a little bit of performance in side hilling uh, because that is one of the disadvantages of overdrive is that the front tires are spinning faster than the rear tires. So you do tend to kind of lose that back end as you go on a side, uh, side hill obstacle. So despite that slight disadvantage in side hilling, I'd, I'd much rather have the advantage of increased steering radius and uh, a little bit more pulling over obstacles as opposed to just pushing. Uh, yeah, so that was very easy to do. All the parts you need come in one package and uh, it's a super easy, quick install because the way the VS410 is set up, it's really easy to pop the transmission out of the chassis, open up that transfer case and get these gears installed. It's like maybe a five minute process. And uh, that's one of the great things about the Vanquish chassis is that it is extremely easy to work on. Everything is right out there in the open uh, and doesn't require a ton of effort to get everything out and put back in. It's a really great chassis and uh, I'm glad I'm using it for class two this year. So I think that's gonna cover it. We're getting closer every day. I'm really, really pleased with the progress so far. Tell me what you think. Is this something that you would wanna comp with in a national level competition? Uh, do you think it has any potential? Is it all gonna come down to driver skill? Who's gonna win between Josh and I? Not that it really matters. I'm going there to have a good time and to make fun of him as much as possible. If you've got a comment or a question, be sure to post it down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. So I think that's gonna cover it. We're getting closer every day. Uh, there is some finishing work that I have to do on these metal pieces. Uh, once you braze, there's a lot of residue and stuff, so I'm gonna have to hit that with uh, a wire brush. 
I don't have a sandblasting booth, otherwise I would totally blast these because uh, it really comes out really nice when you do that. I'm really excited. I'm getting kind of pumped and uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to ship all these out to Josh or if I am going to travel with them. If I do, I'm going to pick up a new Pelican case so I can uh, transport them safely. Otherwise, uh, that's it. I'll probably have another update video for you next week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.